Welcome back to the uh, Nutramedical Report Hour 3, which is one of the most popular hours for our preppers. It is the Preparedness, Civil Defense, Martial Law, and Civil Earth Changes Hour with our special panel. Uh, John Moore, of course, has his own radio show. He's a prepper and a consultant for preppers. As a former Special Forces and a forensic investigator is his current uh, regular job. And he also is a major consultant for people trying to prepare, including corporations and individuals with the resources to do so. Uh, he has his own radio show over at Public Radio from 7 to 9 a.m., Monday to Friday, Central Standard Time. And the website is thelibertyman.com. Ann Morrison's our scientist involved with many different areas of science, including the uh, levels of ozone in the air, ultraviolet light, volcanism and earthquakes. Uh, her website is homeland-defenseforyou.com, and she gave us a link today for ultraviolet light uh, patches. We have... Uh, uh, Alexander Bachman going to be coming on a little later on the program. John, what's the latest? What's happening? Well, Dr. Bill, thank you for having me. And i got to get out of here by a quarter after. But uh, DEPCA is reporting imminent war with Syria. I can't describe what's going on there with these multiple sh- warships from multiple nations. Anything other than an armada. Uh, I don't have the number in front of me, but it's something like eight or ten nations have warships in the eastern Mediterranean. Does that include uh, uh, Russia and China? What about Russia and China? Do they have any ships uh, in Well, Russia, China really doesn't have any warships. In the, they got a big hospital ship in, in the uh, Gulf of Aden. But, uh, yeah, Germany, uh, England, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, United Arab Emirates. Uh, it's just, uh, of course, our uh, the Eisenhower's there. Uh, it, it's every, All the pieces are in place. Uh, everything's locked, cocked and locked and ready to go. Uh, I expect there could be war uh, very, very soon in a matter of days uh, in well, that part of the world. Let, let's look at the consequences. If there's a regime change, those weapons of mass destruction will fall into the hands of Salafi extreme Muslims, so it increases the danger to Israel. If they don't happen, it means because Russia says no, it, which means we may have a level of conflict disaster, and all we need is somebody on the Syrian side to decide to fire off a Yukon's hypersonic cruise missile or your uh, hoot uh, super cavitation uh, high speed torpedo, and one of our carrier groups like the Eisenhower is going to go to the bottom of the Mediterranean with That's thousands right. of so, so sailors. So That's we right. have a very dangerous situation. And we have the idiot in chief that's going off to Hawaii to vacation where he's planning on moving into his new Hawaiian palace, $10.5 million palace on the 15th of January, five days before inauguration. Well, he left the fiscal cliff because he likes the fiscal cliff. In fact, I think he's a cliff diver, just like the cliff divers of Mexico. <laughs> you know, Hillary met with her Russian counterpart in the last 48 hours. And, yeah, I'm in Dublin, right? That, uh, well, they, they, yeah, they, they cut a deal. And I was talking to one of my associates earlier today. They're splitting the world between the two of them. So I think they've cut the deal on how, what's gonna, how this is going to play out with Syria. Uh, China's kind of a wild card. They, they've never had the presence with Syria that Russia has. They've all, Syria has been a Russian client state for many decades, and uh, they're a key player in this. And I, and I think the decision was made between Hillary and Russia as to exactly how this is going to play out. The only question in my mind, Dr. Bill, is uh, why? Is, is Syria outside the international banking community? Is that the reason this is going down? Uh, no, actually, Syria has a Rothschild-style bank. The only ones that didn't were uh, Cuba, Tur- uh, Iran, and uh, North Korea. Well, then, then why, why, why have they become the bad boys on the block? They, they've been kind of a minor supporter of Syria, of, of, excuse me, international uh, terrorism. But uh, why have they become the bad boys all of a sudden? Uh, well, Dustin Hoffman would probably give us the answer. It's called Wag the Dog. The tail of is state of Israel is wagging the dog of America. And they don't like these weapons of mass destruction, even though Bashar Assad, the eye doctor, has no intentions of using them. He's not stupid against Israel or any of his neighbors, unless he's invaded. And I do believe they have fueled the, the uh, chemical weapons, and I do believe they will use them if there's an invasion. And I don't think our troops are prepared for the idea of uh, VX nerve gas. I took care of special forces. I was one of their civilian doctors taking care of people who work in special ops, including uh, those that survived uh, special ops in the east uh, west German border, back in the early 80s and I can tell you what happens if you get a micro drop which is a hundredth of a drop on your body it starts to eat through the flesh when the bleb of your flesh explodes the material from that micro drop lands on other parts of your flesh eats to the bone and if anybody nearby if it lands on them it actually eats away at them as well within a matter of minutes it's literally it's like a B movie 
you're literally your flesh is dissolving and you're dying in a pool of of literally destroyed cells and tissues it's unbelievable what it does to you so these well, aren't just we, we, were, we were told you know, we were told that one drop would kill us not with the kind of uh, explicit uh, description you give micro drops in the army they, they always told us that a uh, well it's, it's, one it, drop it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a typical uh, cholinesterase inhibitor like you know serin nerve gas this is one that literally causes a massive a massive release of peroxisomes and lysosomes so literally you rot while you're standing and running you literally rot your flesh and as the flesh explodes the exploded flesh rots other tissue with touches, including you or your compatriots that are running, uh, trying to get away from the gas. So, well, it's horrendous, no <laughs> doubt. Uh, on one hand, on the other, uh, it, it looks like we're very, very near war, and, and uh, well, I believe everybody needs to be aware of that. I think the I think the next thing we have to look at is uh, why is this uh, being done now, two weeks before what I call the end of the world day, which is uh, I heard that Julia Gillard, and we have her video posted up posted up a very crazy, very bizarre uh, video up less than a minute long where she stands straight faced between two Australian flags with a seven-pointed star and actually makes a statement about the end of the world and says you may be eaten by zombies or flesh-eating demons from hell and all those other things. It's mind-boggling uh, that she would post this up, but I posted up the actual video link embedded onto our, our site today and uh, when you have someone who you know is totally on the, on the globalist side, Julia Gillard, we call her Julier Gillard. A good name. Right. Add the word right. liar. Julier Gillard. She said when she was first elected she wasn't going to put in the Green Agenda, and she's made total alliances with the Green Party to stay in power. They put in carbon taxes, which are killing Australian coal, which is some of the best coking coal in the world, uh, and put in massive increases in power costs, etc., and are trying to terrorize the people of Australia that the weird climate change is not due to the Macondo drill site or climate change caused by solar galactic events. It's because people are breathing out CO2. You've got to stop it. Don't pass is, gas. Is, well, Dr. Bill, isn't carbon dioxide heavier than air? Yeah, it is. It is heavier well, than air. How can, also, it get up in, how, how can it get in the upper atmosphere and do any harm then? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Dr. Yeah. Bill, Dr. Bill, I need to go. Uh, and uh, you all have a great show, and we'll talk soon. Absolutely, yeah. So the the real news is we're on the verge of a major Middle East war, uh, and they have it perfectly timed to arrive with the with the Grinch. Uh, and tell us the latest of what's happening on your side. Well, I uh, uh, am worried about the Middle East war and and what they're saying about sarin gas, and you know if one of those. Well, if it either falls into uh, the Al-Qaeda uh, hands or if the government there decides to bomb something, it, you know, these things go astray. You well, know, I, I'd like to say, make this important statement, a, a news release. There's not one instance since 9-11 which was a, a self-inflicted wound by the U.S. government in collaboration with Saudi and Israeli Mossad secret police to uh, promulgate the 9-11. But when they attack Syria, and then, of course, we want to follow with Iran, the level of terrorism that's going to come up in American or Americans traveling overseas will be mind-boggling. Uh, if, you, if you do not have a significant fear of non-CIA-sponsored real terrorism by nations that we're trying to crush, you should be afraid. Because if they attack Syria and then later on try to attack Iran, they're going to unleash hell on us. And as uh, Bashar Assad, who's the eye doctor, says, don't do this, the results will be catastrophic. He's already loaded up these chemical weapons because guess what? He won't use them against his own people, as he said, it's suicidal. Why would I attack Turkey? There's no political or, or material gain for him to attack Turkey. But if he's invaded, he's going to use them. He's telling you that. He's saying, please don't do this. Uh, we have these so-called terrorists being brought in weapon systems and now they want to supply more weapons the west is cut off along with uh, the arab emirates cut off their radio communications and their internet we've given them what's called mesh network internet to the uh, so-called syrian free army which are terrorists we've given them satellite phones etc to make sure while we cut off their communications the terrorists have internet and communications Welcome back, uh, and you had an important announcement. I wanted to hear from Alexander Bachman about the uh, Mexico, about the Muerto Code. Uh, and tell us about the latest news you have to tell us on the Preparedness Earth Changes Hour. 
Well, I want to talk about the uh, falling river levels in Missouri, the Missouri River and the Mississippi River and what the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is doing about that. So I don't know who you want to go first. Yeah, and tell us about that, because most people don't realize this is very disastrous. Also, it means not only will goods not go, but also coal. So coal-fired generators will shut down by and cause a major power shortage here in the new year. Oh, absolutely. Um, that's where the greater St. Louis metropolitan area gets its power from, is from those coal-fired power plants that are just across St. Louis and East St. Louis. I think what so, is it, the total uh, amount of power generated by coal in America is is the majority of power. Uh, followed by natural gas and and, uh, and uh, other oiled, you know, uh, liquid uh, liquid propane, etc. But uh, coal is by far the majority power generator in America. And people don't realize that. The big news about the drought that hit the Midwest, and I'm not just talking about the Mississippi River Valley or the Missouri River Valley. I'm talking about the entire Midwest. Is that the water levels in the lakes and uh, other rivers? Uh, including the Mississippi and the Missouri, are falling. And when they fall, they they move slower. And when they move slower, they warm up. And then they become host to uh, bacteria and protozoan and amoeba that are, uh, in some cases, fatal to humans, especially infants. Now, I looked at the water quality report put out by my local uh, water company, that supplies water not only here in St. Louis County but also in St. Charles County, and I, I want everyone in the Midwest to, that that has uh, water that is supplied by a company. In other words, if you're living in a city and and you don't have your own well, you need to know how that water company treats your water because as the water levels drop, the water quality also drops. And in fact, there's a statement on my water quality report that says that they do not meet the EPA standards for cryptosporidium, which is a bacterial disease that causes diarrhea, diarrhea and dehydration. Uh, Lardia, Giardia lambda is also another one of those protozoan things that gets into your uh, small intestine and causes you a lot of, well, you die from dehydration. You have to get to a hospital. You have to be treated for it. You have to have your... Uh, fluids replaced and in some cases they can give you something that will evacuate those things from your from your intestine. The worst thing is the is the um, <coughs> is the uh, is the um, thing that gets up into your brain and it it uh, in warm stagnant waters it it actually if it gets in your nose, it will make its way into your brain. It will eat your brain, and you will die. And there is no treatment for that. So, along with your with your flotation devices, you need to wear uh, nose plugs uh, if you're going to be in stagnant, still, and I mean low water. And that qualifies almost every river and every lake that's been in the drought region. Uh, if you don't do that, you're going to uh, be taking a huge risk and in fact I've already started not only boiling my water because boiling water will not it will kill the bacteria and the virus but it will not kill the cysts and the spores of these very dangerous parasites and so I, I'm also adding uh, chlorine dioxide which you can get at any yeah store. actually the chlorine dioxide we have something better than chlorine dioxide uh, <clears throat> which can form chloramines we use neutriodine or silver 100 that kills immediately. It persists better than the triodine. The uh, silver 100 <coughs> kills but doesn't persist. The other, of course, is a liquid, the form of Alamax or Alamed. But chlorine dioxide can form chloramine, which are 100,000 times more toxic than chlorine gas. Uh, or they, if you use uh, fluoridated compounds, they are a 10 million times more toxic than fluoride, believe it or not, to form fluoramines. So uh, okay, I usually don't recommend the, the chlorine dioxide. It's like... Uh, I know some people will think it's a miracle. In fact, I've had people kind of push it. It's part of this, uh, what was the, the, the cure they were talking about? It was actually using different cleaners to generate chlorine dioxide, and people were taking it as an internal treatment to kill off Lyme disease and other pathogens. These were chlorine dioxides that have been used for cleaning out horse stalls for five decades. It's bad stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I'm not saying it's good stuff, but at least it will. If you're one or two, we have alternatives that are non toxic. I, I researched this to make sure that there were no there were non toxic alternatives because as soon as you take a non iodine based uh, halide, they directly are toxic to mitochondria. That's why chlorinated water, you got to remove the chlorine after it's potable so that you don't chlorinate your, your mitochondria and you don't use fluoridated water, you totally remove it and you don't bathe in a, in a hot tub that has bromine salts. It's all mitochondrial toxic. Interesting. And, eh? Well, it's easy to obtain. People can obtain it at any outdoor store and it's yeah. relatively cheap. Um, but they certainly need to look into what you have and what you have to say. Yeah, about they, that. if they use the ones we have, they can kill off the pathogens without the danger. Chlorine dioxide is going to work, just like you know. I tell people, chlorinated water is fine in your city, but you better take the chlorine out. And that's why we're working on a whole house system, which I'm testing out actually a test of it in the next month or so. I get all the pieces here for this new whole house system. It's about a quarter of the cost, but you can actually change the filters and it'll be much higher quality than any of the commercial systems out there like Culligan, et cetera. And you can pop these 22 uh, out inch long filters. You do a Y connector, put three filters on one side, three on the other. If you have a larger home or just three all together, just one set of three along the water line, and you can actually pull out all of the uh, toxins out of the water except for uh, the ones that you're going to use in your, in your pure water system for drinking. So I usually recommend a drinking water system on top of that. But you don't want chloramines. Uh, you don't want um, uh, any of these chlorinated halide compounds. are all xenoestrogens as well. So that, anyway, that's if interesting. Your treat, if your water treatment plant is not using ozone or ultraviolet light or activated charcoal, and very few of them are because they're all very expensive treatments. And I know that yeah. my water system, my, my uh, yeah. water well, treatment they, plant, uses none of that. Well, that's why all of the cities in America will tell you from a cancer clinic, if you've got cancer or immune suppression because you've got terminal AIDS or some other major condition like chemo or radiation, don't drink the city water in any city in America, Canada, or the Western world because you're going to be exposed to Giardia lamblia, Cryptosporidium C, uh, viruses which are not inactivated by chlorine. Uh, I think I think the uh, the pathogens kind of think that chlorine and the other things they do to the water are like vitamins because it doesn't do a damn thing to them. All it does is remove E. coli, which is a stool bacterium. Uh, it really doesn't remove anything really bad that could get you. And they also uh, kill babies besides the immune compromised. It, it's also bad for babies. Babies don't have a fully functional uh, uh, system yet. You mean a gastrointestinal system. system. So they, yeah, so that in other words, if they have a baby gets exposed to public water, it can actually cause diarrhea. In fact, the, the chief cause of uh, death for newborns Worldwide is, is if they don't die of a purpural infection from the mother in the genital urinary tract, they die of an infection caused by infective diarrhea. Well, anyway, the water level on the at the Kansas City is, has dropped about uh, has dropped about three, two and a half feet already. And by the way, and people it, like uh, Mayor Bloomberg would t otherwise have us believe, along with the New Jersey Mayor Christie that global warming and climate change are caused by us breathing out CO2 and that we're at fault so we just need to go away and the planet will survive. Back in a moment. And I uh, didn't want to because of corruption inside. America is so strong we can only bring it down from the inside, including in the priesthood of the church. Welcome back, and uh, and you had an important comment, and we're going to go over to uh, John to uh, Alexander Bachman. Uh, you had an important comment to make. Just uh, please tell us that. Yeah, I want people to uh, watch the jet stream, and uh, they can find it on different places on the web. And uh, the last week, and in fact even this week, you'll see that the piece of the jet stream is crossing the North Pole. So it's crossing from Alaska. And uh, crossing the North Pole, getting very, very cold. There's a, this is a very, very cold air mass that's over the North Pole in the Arctic Circle and then going down into Siberia. And they have had tremendous uh, snowstorms and ice storms in, in uh, Siberia. So uh, when that comes around, uh, um, hope, I guess it's, eventually it's going to hit the United States and we're we're going to have the same thing because it is rotating. Uh, I already see that it's lessening over Siberia. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have violent changes in climate. Uh, the movie The Day After Tomorrow, which is like an apocalyptic movie, is starting to happen. 
Sandy, which is a geoengineered storm, was specifically parked over there to cause destruction and to prevent the surge of Romney. We know also that uh, they've disrupted it with the Bacondo drill site with the disruption of the loop current, and the solar and galactic changes are occurring. We have the melting of the permafrost in the north, but we have uh, the increase in the ice shelf uh, in Antarctica dramatically. It's much, much colder than usual. And this uh, jet stream anomaly was causing this massive backup of, of traffic 34 miles long earlier in the week. I don't know how much they've cleared it, but I, I haven't seen an out follow-up report. But they've had the coldest winter across uh, Russia, right through Siberia and northern China that they've ever recorded. Uh, this is not normal. And then, of course, it's unusually warm here, including when I spoke to my brother in eastern Canada just yesterday. It's, uh, it's unbelievably mild. And uh, not normal temperatures at all. Right here in Southern California, it's warmed back up, so it's basically like uh, a nice day in summer. Well, and that's right. And the uh, jet stream is coming up from Hawaii and hitting into uh, California and Oregon and Washington. And they had expected that the snow level would get down to uh, 6,500 feet. It didn't. It got down to 7,500 feet. They said it's so warm. They said that that part of the jet stream, that river of moisture that they call the Pineapple Express, is so warm. Yes, it dumped a foot of rain on California, and another one is coming in and is going to dump another foot of rain. But uh, it doesn't get over the mountains, and so we're not going to see it here in the Midwest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Alexander, you have some very interesting things to tell us. Tell us about the uh, latest revelations you have, because... We have an armada of ships from at least 10 nations, NATO and the United States, now getting ready to attack Syria. It appears, and I think that I talked to Joel Skousen the other day, he was on the program last week, that the Russians are going to make a deal to allow Assad to fall. Uh, the globalists have made an, a, a strategic alliance that states they want these weapons to go to Qatar and to the Salafi Muslims and the extremists. If they don't apprehend the weapons, if they do make the regime fall, they're going to fall into the hands of people that will use them on Israel, and Israel will use nukes on them. So I think we're on the, on the forward cusp of an unstable situation that will precipitate the peace treaty in the Middle East, and that means the last seven years of secular history of this aeon is upon us. Uh, so tell us the latest revelations you have. Well, basically, that's the same thing. I mean, we've been seeing this war for, uh, being prepared and staged uh, for two years now uh, with the escalation of events in Israel and the Middle East, uh, right. exactly as you just mentioned. I mean, this is a very, very carefully planned operation. And no, I do not believe that special ops from uh, multiple nations are able to control all those chemi uh, chemicals or no. weapons of mass destruction that uh, <clears throat> they allegedly say, I'm going to say, it openly, Assad has stockpiled in his country and ready to use against Israel. Yeah. It well, could uh, be let, 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 me, let, me, let me fill you in on some classified information I have from my yeah. sources. Not only does Assad have them, but they've been collaboratively working on chemical and biological weapons with Iran, which translated these neural, uh, this advanced bioweapons from the biopreparate program. But all the weapons that Saddam Hussein have, and I actually saw the receipts for the weapons that were actually sent out of Bethesda, the Type Culture Lab, to, uh, to uh, uh, Saddam Hussein, and those same weapons, I actually have the reports directly from the Russians who actually helped ship them to Syria. So, no, they're sitting on a mountain of RDX, high explosive uh, RDX, nerve gas, sarin nerve gas, and VX. They also have advanced bioweapons that were being developed by Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. uh, he was doing experiments, like, for example, he was taking... Uh, a, a weaponized form of, of Ebola, putting it in gerbils and actually shattering them after they were put dropped in liquid nitrogen. That's just one of many experiments. He had type yeah, culture lab. Yeah, I my comment. I mean, yeah, uh, you, need, you need to know that these weapons are there. But yeah. Bashar Assad has absolutely, and he said this over and over again, and his foreign service people have absolutely no intention of using it. Now, you have to understand what's going on. Uh, the paper, I, I read this yesterday, I want to read it again just for a minute. It says here, Okay. Arms for Libya went to Islamists, and this is from uh, NYT News Service. The Obama administration sec secretly gave its blessing to arms shipments to Libyan rebels from Qatar last year. But U.S. officials later grew uh, alarmed as evidence grew that Qatar was turning, to some, turning some of the weapons over to Islamic militants. Come on, you know, what do they think we are, a bunch of morons? 
all of these weapons are going to militants that are from Afghanistan, Indonesia, Iran. I mean, they're all over the place. They're coming from Libya, primarily in Tunisia. We call the old pirate capital of Benghazi. It's been a pirate capital for 5,000 years. Uh, they are doing regime change because this is a proxy war between Sunni and Shiite Islam, which started five years ago. Mm -hmm. The response of the West to this proxy war because they don't want the rise of Medo-Persia. Medo-Persia is Media, which is the northern part of Iraq, where they now have a giant supply of oil, eight times larger proven supply than Saudi Arabia. And uh, just earlier this year in January, a pipeline was finished between Iran and Turkey. And most people aren't aware of this, but half of the population in Iran are Turks. They're Turkic. People don't know. They think they're all just Iranians. No, half the population of Iran. So... Eastern uh, Eastern Turkey is virtually 95% Median or Kurdish, and they have okay. they've been getting backing uh, there. And I really believe what we have is we have the gathering storm of a Shiite, Sunni Shiite war, and uh, in the middle, of course, is little Israel <clears throat> that our current president doesn't want to properly protect, which is stupid because if you don't protect Israel, it's armed to the teeth with advanced weapons. They're going to use it when some idiot attacks them, and that some idiot is the people to take over Syria, because they're going to sit on the largest stockpile of weapons in the Middle East, uh, is Syria. and Or, or get them out of there, or <clears throat> use them as soon as possible against Israel. I don't uh, think it's going to be so easy. I mean, they've got many tons of weapons. It took them, apparently, the Russians three to four months to move the darn things from Saddam Hussein, and the, and the Syrians have been building up their own stockpiles with Iran for decades. So this is not like an early thing. We should be thankful that Bashar Assad is an eye doctor and doesn't want war. But instead, but, what we're but doing is inflaming that the situation. But now they're saying that he's on airplanes and uh, <clears throat> that he's planning on putting the chemicals on airplanes and using them. So they're fear mongering in order to get the. Uh, well, they're fear mongering. Well, first off, he's he's loaded them up, but he has no intention of using them unless he's invaded. I can say this categorically: <clears throat> one of the people you do not mess with are Syrians. They will beg you not to fight them, not to do this or that, and they'll put a line in the sand and say, no, don't do that. They're not going to attack the Syrians. They're not going to attack the Turks. They're not going to go into all these other things. But the placement of Patriot 2, possibly Patriot 3 systems, which the Turks have, along the Turkish-Syrian border, guarantees that they're probably within two weeks of a planned invasion. Right before Christmas, I called it Grinchimus, they're planning an invasion of Syria. Of Syria. I believe so, and it's all based on sevens being today, December seventh. They're going to count up the countdown to well, December remember, 14th remember also and, and, and isn't do today it on the first December. Well, isn't this also? Is it today? This is the anniversary of Hiroshima. I'm sorry, no, no, sorry, Pearl Harbor. I'm thinking of Pearl, Pearl Harbor. Harbor. Yes. Yeah, Pearl Harbor. It's Pearl Harbor Day today. Yes. Yeah, people didn't realize we're two weeks. Yeah, we're away. Pearl Harbor, by the way, to move the the fleet out to uh, Hawaii from San Diego on purpose when they had already broken the uh, code and knew that there was going to be an attack and purposely set them up to be a a, 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 a dialectic clay pigeon so they could bring haul America into the world to the world war. That's what's going on. We're going to be hauled to another world war probably before Christmas as things continue as they are. You have to think that if you wanted to uh, have a deal between Hillary Clinton who met uh, with uh, Lavrov in uh, Dublin, that hotel there, uh, yesterday, the, the ideal deal would be to bring in Russian, Chinese, and American NATO forces to simply say, we're going to stop invading your country and providing arms to destroy your country and, and put the population in danger, and we're going to remove these advanced weapons from your country, which could be done over a period of several months under proper guard, and we're going to leave you alone. But no, 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 they don't want to do that. That's why we now have the so-called revolution in, in Tahrir Square. It's re-revoluting because the Muslim Brotherhood, which are supported by the West now, have decided to have a constitution that's an Islamist one that takes away all women's rights. I mean, it treats women. One of my um, guests, Walid Shabbat, said this, and I've heard it said many years ago by my relatives from Lebanon that are Christian Marianites. Uh, the sequence of hierarchy of rights is man, camel, goat, sheep, woman. Uh, and that's what's going to happen in, in, uh, in Egypt. It's very nasty. Uh, women's rights will be absolutely zilch. The, also, anybody who's Christian or a Jew, you're a persona non grata, and they're going to demand extra taxes and, and payments. They've been raping and grabbing uh, at the rate of 500 girls per week in just Cairo alone. 
and either uh, raping and marrying them and then maybe throwing them aside or bringing them back to the family. If the family tries to recover their daughter that's been abducted, they put a fatwa out and kill everyone in the family. This has been going on now since the so-called revolution in the Muslim Brotherhood. Now there's so many people that even voted for Mohammed Morsi. They're freaked out by the fact he wants to be an absolute dictator now. And they push through the barricades, etc., in the palace. They've been pummeling his home with bottles and other things. I don't think the Egyptians are going to be messed around with. I think that they had enough last year. Now that Morsi wants to be a dictator, this is going to get over the top. And Egypt, just like Syria, if Syria gets taken over by these extreme Muslims, they're going to get this giant stockpile and think they got in, they got the mother load of weapons, and they want to use it against Israel to wipe out the state. And once Israel gets wind that they're actually going to use it, a lot of people think that Netanyahu is nuts. No, Netanyahu is a guy who's with it and understands that the people around him want him and every Jew, Christian, and anybody living in the state of Israel, including Arab Christians, dead. And if people don't get that, they don't understand the, the nature of Islam, they don't understand the Middle East. They just don't get it, do they? No, they don't, but uh, the same thing. I mean, where are we going to draw the line? Who are we going to support? Neither neither side. I mean, war is war, and it's all Well, you can, you can neutralize it. You can have our right, special right. forces sit on top of the weapons that Israel has, and you can defang uh, Syria and Hezbollah in Lebanon so they don't try to start something like a rocket war against Israel. Uh, and you have to have collaboration with the Russians and Chinese and put them in on, on the inside uh, of the deal. Uh, just having the okay to come in and invade and take over Syria without Russian troops on the ground and Russian forces and Chinese there doesn't make them own the decision to actually bring down the regime and to make sure those weapons get taken out of there. Because if it passes over to Salafi Muslims and Muslim Brotherhood, not only God help uh, it, them, but God help us. Because if they think it'll be safe to get on, on a plane or a boat or travel internationally outside the United States, uh, it'll be gravely dangerous for Americans if we do a major invasion of Syria. Number two, we will probably have the release of biological weapons on American soil within the next year or dirty bombs. So Absolutely. I mean, Iran is already prepping for that. Um, it's up on my website, alexanderbachman.com. Uh, we have a situation escalating, and uh, we know that Iran is already prepping its uh, sleeper cells uh, within the United States. They're well within the U.S. now. Oh, yeah, a lot of them came into Mexico. They're in here, and these are very intelligent people and very determined people. They're not people that you want to mess with, and they don't want to do this. We are forcing them into the situation, and it's just like uh, Obama wanting to pass this treaty to take away our guns. How sane is Obama and Hillary Clinton, these other maniacs, to try to take away the guns from 174 million armed Americans? There's not enough armies on the earth to take on the American civilian population. Period. Which is lunacy. They just want the kill. Uh, they're going for the kill. Well, no, no, they're going to go for their own kill because what will happen is they better hide in their lairs underground because we'll stuff... Uh, things in their air intake valves and if they if and this involves by the way a lot of our troops especially our vets that's why at the top of the list of people they consider terrorists are returning veterans from anywhere from two to four one two to three four tours of duty with all kinds of skill sets as my friends in special forces say we don't need a weapon we can take over a building with a fork and a knife and i'm talking about a butter knife not a regular big knife in other words, well these people. guys, these are these are people with skill sets, as they say. You know, uh, if you got somebody that's got skill sets like this, they're terrified of them because they know they don't even need even full conventional weapons. So that's what I think is pretty bizarre: is that our government's stupid enough and crazy enough that they want to do this. And their latest move is to try to see if they can reclassify semi-automatic weapons, saying they can be made automatic because they don't like the idea that maybe Americans might be able to defend themselves if the government goes over the edge. Precisely. What I see playing out here is a bunch of, a bunch of well, look, I'm full of codes in my head right now as it is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a journalist in my own country, Mexico, that is uh, being catapulted into 130,000 dead already in six years. We yeah, have tell new... about these codes, though, because you did this uh, article, which we'll post up as well. What about this yeah. code that you worked out? It's a, well, it's a revelation. I start doing graphic design, and suddenly I get these codes in my head. I can't get them out of my head until I put them on a, 
on a like a crossword format and uh, words start forming um, I start doing the research and it turns out it is a very deep code of information it has multi layers but basically it's Mexico is dead Mexico is muerto and 21-12-2012 uh, is the marker point of uh, something very big that uh, announces or heralds a massive killing on this planet. And it's very important to for people to start to understand that if we pray against this, this could be thwarted. At least I don't know how for how long, but uh, I see death everywhere coming. Uh, death, death, death. I don't see anything else except death and killing. And it's very sad because there's a com uh, complacency and uh, depraved indifference from part of uh, uh, the major part of society. And um, uh, well, the worst part is that, the, the worst part is a, the worst part is it was called a Christian church. Now, I'm going to make a statement here now that might piss people off, but it's just the way it is. The current modern church, if it's ten thousand denomination, we're talking about Christians now. It's supposed to be the pinnacle of, of Christianity. They don't want to have a true prophetic voice telling them to straighten up and, and to start actually doing what they're supposed to be to be salt and light. They don't want to hear it. And they don't even want even general details, let alone specifics. They get very angry, and I call it the sin of Cain. They don't want to hear that someone has been told by God to give them a specific message because it, it wrangles them. And again, you don't need a mediator, but there are people called to speak prophetically to a corporate body of the church, and they don't want to hear it. They don't have any part of it, and if anybody suggests that they may have a prophetic word for the body of, of, of believers, they literally treat the, the so-called prophet or people with a prophetic word, even if they're not called as a prophet, as some kind of a form of apostate or a, a, a devil that needs to be excised from the body. Yeah, That's really I, I, disturbing. Expiated. And what, look, what we're seeing here is, yes... Uh, prophetic revelation in itself, but what what I, I don't care if my message is not politically correct with the the, the Christian uh, dispensational uh, dispensationalists in the United yeah. States. Uh, for me, I don't care yeah. about them any yeah. more uh, than for the normal uh, Joe. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean because these people are not even doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, there's a depraved indifference in the United States, also in Mexico. Nobody really cares as long as they have their little gadgets and they're all happy this uh, uh, 25th of December. That's the sad thing about Christianity. They don't even get it. They don't get what it is uh, about what is about to happen and what Christianity is all about. It's not about a religion. It's about a book. It's about a living word of our living God. Who well, came the, here the, the, the book basically, I, I, the, the book has, has four characteristics about it. And I, when I said this back in Dallas in 1999, and people were in shock when I said it, I said, what's the Bible? I said, the Bible is a, an autopsy report. It's a set of indictments. It's a set of charges. And, and it's, it's a final condemnation of the world. That's what it is. Now, yes. The God gives a way. That's why the German church was called the way. The way is to have a personal relationship with God. Because without a personal relationship, and this is the definition of good and evil, and you don't get it taught in the churches, but it is. The definition of good is to hear and do God's will, which means God's will is noble for everybody. You don't need a mediator or a priest. You need to get into a state intellectually clean and spiritually clean where you can hear from God. And then when you hear that voice, you have to act on it. If you don't have a relationship, as I say, Heaven starts today, and hell is the absence of it. And it only becomes evident at the day of your death. So if people don't have that re heavenly relationship now, no matter how all the prepping they do with the things that are coming, they will not survive physically or spiritually from what's coming. And uh, remember this Christmas and this uh, December 21st, that's the Mayan day with all these people focusing on it. We're going to have a party that day. But what we need to do is realize the judgment's coming, with this pending war in the Mideast, the peace treaties come and the covenant with death and the final seven years.